Hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue uh, au MeepDoc et à Joe Lewis from Amazon Studios. We're very happy to have you here today. Oh, at least, I mean, it's comfortable, I, right? It's comfortable. I think I'm getting fatter from all the food I'm eating here. Also. I think I'm getting fatter just from <laughs> lack of moving, <laughs> eating, buffets, <laughs> traveling. My humor's not going over well here already. The, the hard life of studio execs. So listen, I'm really excited to have you here because Thanks. You know, Amazon Studios, I think, would, I would say it's one of the latest players coming into the, uh, the content creation. I mean, how would you define what Amazon is right now? Is it, a, is it a channel? Is it OTT? Is it a web? Sure, what Amazon, Amazon Studios is. Yeah. Uh, or the productions you're making for it. What? Or the productions you're making for it. Sure. So um, Amazon Studios, you know, we like to think of it as the most customer-centric television network out there that there is. That's really who and what we take into consideration when we're picking up shows. It's never, you know, does this appeal to the people that work there? Does this appeal to um, advertisers? We're focused on bringing the best shows to customers that, that they want. Um, and we are a television network in the sense that um, I'm a huge believer in shows that are related to each other and the network effect. And, you know, the ability for one show to bring in viewers into another, and it's not a coincidence that we have shows like uh, Mozart in the Jungle and Transparent and The New Yorker Presents and Woody Allen's upcoming show. You know, the goal is to, to really own a uh, specific piece of, of television. And um, I've been there for four years. I was the first person hired on the TV side at Amazon Studios. And um, the exciting part is it still feels like day one there. And, you know, so while I have an answer here, what it is, you are know, you like, are you like a startup of TV or something in a way? Everything like, at Amazon feels startupy, from the small offices to the uh, everything to, to the working very hard. But yeah, yeah. We're, we're you know like like many parts of Amazon, a startup within it. And um, yeah. so I don't know if any one of you here. I mean, I'm sure several people have, but uh, Transparent is one of the you know very important series that came out. And what was interesting is that it's unlike anything we've we've seen basically. I mean, mm -hmm. I was reading one of the interviews with Joe and he was saying that he doesn't want to do anything that has been done even in the theme somewhere else. I mean, that, that pretty much yeah. is a very good guideline, but it's a very hard one to hold, no? Yeah, I mean, it gets easier um, by, by virtue of this fact. You know, if you believe like I do that the platform really informs the product, there was no platform like ours a couple of years ago. There was no one that was giving you or could give you all the episodes at once, anytime, anywhere. And if you let the product follow that and say, well, what does that mean? That means we tell a story differently. If, you're, if you give someone a show one week and then they have to wait a week and watch the next one, you have to remind them of some information. You might have to give them some sort of cathartic feeling at the end of an episode. If we're giving you all the episodes at once, um, it doesn't necessarily follow the same rules. So, you know, Transparent by Design is a five-hour movie that first season. Um, so, in that sense, it's easy to make something new because there aren't a lot of five-hour movies aren't there, out there. But, you know, it is true that, you know, we look for worlds that people haven't seen before. We develop a lot based around worlds. Um, and I just think if you're trying to be a new destination, you know, the interesting thing about streaming is there's not a lot of flipping around as much as there, there might have been before. Um, you, what, do you, what do you mean by flipping around? You know, there's not a lot of uh, flipping around through channels. Uh, what I mean is you, you're, more, oh, you're, you're more of a through. destination yeah. than something people might, might uh, accidentally across, land yeah. on. And you know, my belief is that if you can get it somewhere that you already have and it's easier, um, there's less of a reason to try there. So you know, whether it's oblique worlds like gender or specific worlds like classical music, um, or trying to transfer, you know, uh, the ethos of a magazine like The New Yorker to TV. Um, hopefully they exist in a really unique space. And if it exists um, both as a unique idea and at a high level of art, I think that's really the win for the customer. So I think, you know, for our international audience here, uh, obviously to get to see Amazon's shows, you have to be a subscriber of Amazon Prime, which is a $99 a year subscription. It's 99 in the U.S. I mean, yeah, 99 in the U.S., but you can't really see Amazon Prime TV outside of the U.S. right now? Um, you can see it in the U.K. and Germany and Austria. Okay, and, but you'll be expanding that in other countries in Europe? I think that over time you'll be able to get Amazon in more and more places more and, more and places. easier and easier. So I think that one of the best things to do is that we're going to see a clip of um, a trailer of uh, The New Yorker Presents. Because yeah. that's your first foray in factual, basically. That's Amazon's first, first unscripted TV show. Great. If we can roll the tape. Do 
do the thing that is inspiring to you. Make it actually happen. Split seconds to make a decision to shoot or don't shoot. This is my son, I'm gonna kill him. 9-11 could have been stopped. The CIA was not telling the truth. It's a rough sport. <laughs> Get up, quit crying. Are you champ or chump? Champ. Champ or chump? Champ. There is an absence of men in the community because so many of them are serving such long sentences. A growing number of American prisons are now for-profit businesses. It's an interesting and compelling investment opportunity for a lot of investors today. We are apart from nature rather than a part of nature. And it could be our eventual undoing as a species. People tell me, oh, I live in New York City. I said, oh, really, do you know my son? And they say, there's 10 million people in New York City. What makes you think I know your son? And then I said, oh, he's a naked cowboy. And they say, oh, yeah, I know your son. I'm thinking of ending therapy. There were times, I just know it, when you weren't listening to a word I was saying, right? How to work. Amazing. Can you blame me? You never shut up. No whining. La, 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 la. Who cares? Action. I think that we can only change this world if you change consciousness. Wow. Looks great. I like that trailer. Yeah. And although it says every Tuesday you can now see all the episodes. <laughs> the binge uh, New Yorker presents. Yeah. Now, what is the role of, is it New Yorker who came to see you? Did you go see them? Well, what, what, how did this come about? Uh, so it worked out like this, Condé Nast Entertainment had called me about an idea that just wasn't right for us, and um, I had asked them, what about the New Yorker, could we do something with them, and by coincidence they had already been working with Alex Gibney, or talking about the idea of doing something with the New Yorker with Alex Gibney, so they never pitched it, we sort of, uh, at a moment of synchronicity, had the idea at the same time, mm -hmm. and um, we just went forward with it immediately, just spoke to who we were, the chances they wanted to take, um, you know, David Remnick, who's the editor of The New Yorker, um, and his team on down just match so much of the um, mindset of what we look for, which is um, high artistic integrity, trying to do things different, trying to get into different worlds. Um, and it was just, a, uh, as a longtime fan, it also makes it easier. And um, it was just a good match from, from the get-go. But are these New Yorker stories that you then make into films, or is it yeah, something so else everything, together? everything with the exception of one piece, uh, there was a shot uh, of the Malacón in Cuba mm -hmm. and another shot in there. That, that's from a piece Eugene Jarecki did, which was based on a personal experience uh, of his. Everything else, which he did develop with The New Yorker, everything else is from the magazine. You know, The New Yorker is great, and we had access to the entire history of it, um, although you need to get the writer's permissions as well, and just open up their archives. And, you know, The New Yorker was really involved with the show, and they said, here's a bunch of pieces, I mean, a stack this thick of pieces that they thought might be right. Um, the team behind the show, our showrunner Kahani Cooperman, Alex Gibney, who was the executive producer, went through with us, and we just narrowed it down, and then started matching them up with filmmakers. And, um, you know, the most exciting part for me you know, you see a lot of clips here um, from just top, top filmmakers making these individual, we call them centerpiece docs. Each, each episode has a documentary that's 10 to 15 minutes, which is the real anchor of the episode. And um, we were able to get some great filmmakers. Steve James, who directed Hoop Dreams, did the one about um, uh, uh, young rodeo riders, which is amazing. Alex himself did that one about the CIA. There's just a, a tremendous filmmakers across the board. And, um, I mean, so we're talking about super quality here. I mean, great super, directors, yeah. great cinematography also, but for short formats, I mean, does the cost factor in? Because oftentimes for 30 minutes or so on and so forth, you can't really put like top guns and top cinematography because it's very expensive. Yeah, um, we had a good budget to work with. There's not a, that exciting of a story, He's but smiling, everything. That means a lot. But the money. combination of, you know, the New Yorker <laughs> brand, um, you know, giving people, it's less about the money, I think, and giving people a platform 
where what they're making is both incredibly broadly accessible and again, of the highest artistic order. And if you say to someone, here's a piece which you've helped pick from your favorite magazine, we're gonna make this available for free to tens of millions of people across the world, and we're not gonna give you too much input on how to make it, it turns out that's a good calling card to get great directors. And then, you know, I just can't, um, Alex Gibney again, who is the executive producer, is such a force, um, rightfully so, in the documentary world. Um, having him a part of it, you know, both in selection and attraction of filmmakers really helps. Yeah, it really helps. And now, now Amazon is not like anything. I mean, it's like the supermarket to the world here. Do you use the data? TV shows and toilet paper. Exactly. No, nobody else can say that. <laughs> I mean, from the whole spectrum. <laughs> that's going to be the one quote from this that's pulled. <laughs> T- yeah. Toilet TP yeah. to TV shows. I get, I get both of them from Amazon. From Amazon, exactly. So the question is, do you like have, because obviously Amazon's a big data company also. Uh-huh. So do you have any input? I mean, do you look at your data and see, okay, we've got this kind of population on this territory, that kind of, and then we should do shows for them? How, how does that no, we don't. Um, yes and no. We don't go that, you know, deep into this is a certain territory that we think this will work well in. What you do, what, you think about who might subscribe to Amazon Prime. Do we over-index in, you know, people uh, with a certain level of education or income or in parts of in parts of the world? And you know, you just try to do your best job to conject what they what they might like. You know, we can look at things like like book sales, but you know, the truth is when you're trying to do ideas that haven't been done before like this or Transparent or Mozart in the Jungle, there aren't a lot of comps out there. There's no piece of data that could say classical music TV shows do well in Germany, therefore we should make one. Um, you know, the truth is if you're pitching an idea and everyone that you meet with nods their heads and wants to do it, then that idea probably is a little bit behind the times. You know, what we're looking for those ideas that are just ahead of the curve. Now, obviously, New Yorker magazine is a very famous magazine, but it's also publishing, and publishing has been suffering tremendously these past few years. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you feel that this is like a a new way for publishing to exist beyond its its pages, beyond its traditional? I think, you know, technology, what it does is allows brands to transcend any one particular medium, so to say. You know, what is the New Yorker? I don't want to put words in their mouth, but what I'm guessing it's not first is, you know, 70 to 100 printed pages given to you. It's a style of writing. It's a particular kind of story. Um, And I think that's, you know, there was just a panel before this on virtual reality, and the last question they were talking about, you know, is it television, is it not? I think those questions are sort of irrelevant. it's just a, it's a way to scale a brand rather than create an extension of the magazine, um, because the one thing the show definitely is not is an extension of the magazine. Now, what's really interesting from a marketing your, point of view, yeah, with your with your fiction pieces, what's really interesting is that people can submit them directly on Amazon.com. Yes, sends you my script, and eventually you read them. I think mm-hmm. some shows were were greenlit that way. What's your policy on factual? Is it something you want to develop? What do you see as useful in factual for you? Sure, and uh, so to be clear about the first part, anyone um, can go to amazonstudios.com, and if you've written a script, you can upload it to us. Every script gets looked at, every script gets read. We've made um, one series and made a number of pilots, and again, that goes back to the idea of um, focusing on customers, and that's not just making stuff that they like, but it's giving people an opportunity. Um, but as of yet, there's no way to submit factual ideas to, yet, to us yet, but, um, but I would something I would love to figure out. So what will be your factual policy if you have one? Are you interested in anything? Are there, is it series? What are you interested in? Sure. So, um, you know, we have a, uh, a separate group from mine at, at Amazon. We just launched our first show there called Fashion Fund, um, which is an ad-supported, uh, an ad-supported unscripted show. Um, and they're going to follow that model. We're so, on my side, you know, the half-hour TV side, um, we're continuing just to look for, you know, prestigious, ambitious, risk-taking, smart, cinematic ideas that you haven't seen before. And um, while that sounds broad, the last part, again, we were talking about them before, the stuff you haven't seen before um, is harder to find than, than you'd think. So yeah. that's going to be our brand going forward. And again, serialized. Again, again, it goes back to, you know, what does our platform call for that others, that others don't? And how does that affect how you tell the story? 
Um, it's something, you know, I've been thinking about this for a long time and still haven't, um, don't think we're close to figuring out how the distribution of a pattern can affect the story that you're telling. But you mean like serialization, like Jinx, Making a Murder, NPR, yeah. Serial? Yeah, again, going back that? to the, you know, the five-hour five hour movie of it all, um, you know, what's a five-hour documentary? How should that be arranged? Um, what's a five-hour, what's a documentary that's told in chapters? We give you a bunch of these episodes at once. Um, perhaps it doesn't need to be told linear, linearly. Um, I think that's always what I and, you know, my incredible executive team are waiting for. You know, there's a feeling that you have when you're hearing a pitch, which we do all day long, when you realize it's something that you haven't heard before and you're excited to find out what happens next and you sort of sit up in your seat a little bit and maybe our facial expressions change, but we don't have a mirror. But that, that's just what it is. You know, we're trying, what, what is that thing that you haven't seen before? What, what, feels, what, feels, um, what feels cinematic? And when I say that, I guess I just mean not traditional television aesthetic. I, you know, I, I firmly believe TV and movies are coming together, at least you know, the place that we're watching them is the same. And uh, uh, therefore, I think that um, these things have to have this higher ideal of uh, images and concepts and everything behind them. But Amazon, for, for again, the audience here that's not always familiar, how do you watch Amazon? Like Obviously, on your computer, you can watch sure. it on the web browser and going on Amazon.com. Everyone should have Amazon but Prime. It's great deals on shipping and music. And you can watch it <laughs> on, on your TV. Um, I think we ship on almost all major television. Like Apple TV and um, so, and so forth. So you can watch it on Fire TV, which is our, you can, uh, Fire TV, which is our device. Mm -hmm. You can um, airplay it through Apple TV, or mm -hmm. you can watch it on iOS on your iPad, um, or phone on all the game systems. Um, and does that, does that affect the way that you design kind of like the shows, you know, half hours, or do you then, you know, make sure that you can break it down different ways to consume it differently, or is it not really a pretty Yeah, thing? not the platform in the sense that you're going to watch it on, say, an Xbox versus a Fire cell TV phone. stick yeah, versus okay. yeah. a cell phone, although, you know, I don't think about what it's like to watch it on a, on a three-inch <laughs> screen. I think that'd be the, the wrong way to approach what we want to make. But again, we do think about how, how the story is given to you, what happens when you're given 10 chapters at once, um, what happens you know, when, when you're given two a week like this, what other distribution patterns are there in the future? Um, is there a world where we give you a number of episodes every so often throughout the year? I think, you know, like everybody, I uh, hate to wait for my, new fa my favorite shows to come back. Um, what are the new forms that we could come up with? And that's the most exciting part of my job is when you find something new and a great new idea and a great filmmaker. And again, we're just going back to your first question. We're just allowed to focus on that because what I just named is the only thing I think the audience thinks about. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it's really like this keyword, this buzzword that everyone's using, which is disruptive. And clearly, Amazon being a, a new player in this very crowded field of content sure. has to find a, a real angle. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we're going to grab some questions from the audience uh, for Joe. Yep, we, uh, Mike's coming to you. Can you please introduce yourself and say who you are? I'm a journalist from India. Yeah. Hi. Uh, will this move to Washington Post? You know, why with New Yorker and not with Washington Post? Wait, sorry, could you say the question once more? I know he's asking or, what, or, why the New Yorker, why not the Washington Post, oh. for example? Um, first, the, the Washington Post is, uh, while well, it's owned by uh, Jeff Bezos, who's the CEO of Amazon, it's not an Amazon company, and there's no, the New Yorker came to us with a great idea. I would do something with the Washington Post if they did, but no part of my job. Um, you know, is about getting you to buy a certain item on Amazon or subscribe to the Washington Post. Our job is to make great TV. Yes, in the front we have another question here. One second. Okay, can you introduce yourself also? Please? Sure, my name is Lindsay Haskin. I'm from San Diego. I'm a, I'm a producer. Um, I'm wondering what your uh, arrangement is with the writers uh, with the, of the New Yorker stories. Do they have any kind of uh, you know, editorial control over this? Are you able to take whatever they wrote and turn it into, sure. and, and, and are, are the filmmakers doing that or are, is your staff doing that? The staff of the show is doing that. So every one of the pieces, the writers of the actual pieces have to sign off on. Um, the New Yorker, I believe, is one of the few magazines where the writers themselves re uh, retain the rights to their pieces. So everything that you've seen up there, the writer, and it's to, you know, different levels of input. Some just said, do what you will. Um, some, some were involved, some come to all the events. But every single writer, you know, is a part of it in some way, and if at minimum giving permission to use their pieces. Yeah. More questions? Yep. Hi, my name 
Yeah. yeah. My name's uh, Clive Patterson, uh, producer from the UK. Hi. I was just curious, uh, when it comes to your half-hour programming, are you looking for singles more, or are you looking more for half-hour series, six-part series, ten-part series, just in general, what's kind of, what are you looking for? Uh, and by singles, do you mean just one-offs? Yeah. I have to translate to American broadcasting. Um, we're looking, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the home run for us, the, the, the big win, is an ongoing series that you can come back to, but we're open we're open to everything. We're open to event series. We're open to limited. Um, more and more, I'm open to anthological, you know, a show that resets itself every year. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no one thing. One-off is probably not, you know, a single is probably not as much of our business. Um, but I wouldn't preclude us from doing everything in the long run. But really, you know, sustaining ongoing series that people can subscribe to come back to, I think, is, is a good place to be. Okay, Joe Lewis, Amazon Studios. This is your one time. Here we go. Right in front. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. One more question. When will you be available in other countries? Like, say, for example, India. Yeah, so we're not uh, talking yet about when we're going to be going around the world, but I think if you look at the direction of all network communications, they've always gone from regional to domestic and then international. Um, I think over time, you know, you'll probably see the same sort of growth coming from Amazon. When I don't know. Another question in front. Thank you, Stuart from the Mip Blog. What have you learned about how people watch? Are they binging to the extent that we all think they are? Are they watching at different times a day? What have been the interesting data learnings from how they're watching the shows? So um, that's a question that I like to learn the answer to whenever I find out stuff myself. So what I can tell you is, people always start with episode one and they watch it all the way through. People do binge a ton. I think, I was just looking at some data point, I think something, um, a, a majority of people, I just remember with Transparent, you know, had watched almost the entire show in the first 10 days. People really watched straight through. People don't, don't hold it out too much. Um, yeah, people now, start with episode one, people watch it all the way through. That's. And like, like Netflix, do you guys not give out audience numbers, or can we get an idea of... It, we do you know? not give out audience numbers. Damn. I, was trying to get a scoop I think there. it's good. It focuses on the creative. You know, the producers don't know it either, and what we talk about with them isn't how to get their numbers up. It's, is this moment truthful? Is this compelling? Is this something people haven't seen before? Is this risk-taking? Not here's what the show did last week. Let's try to. And how, how do you push forward the, the the new series? Is it email? Is it on the website? Is it? How, you mean marketing wise? Yeah, marketing wise. Yeah. So we do spend. You know, hopefully, if you live in the U.S. or U.K. or Germany, you've seen marketing for some of the shows. But um, you know, the three things I'd say that you need for a show to be successful, besides you know, a relatable idea, some accessible piece of talent, is people have to know about the show and a ton of marketing. And that's something that, you know, we have done and will continue to do. You know, the only part that's interesting and different is what our marketing isn't is centered solely on the launch of the show. You know, what I think is great about archival TV, and to me archival is the important part, it, it, over streaming. It's not the fact that we're giving it to you from a server, but the fact that um, it's going to be available for our time, for, for all time. That's why we focus on the quality, which while it's, um, to me, that's as much of a marketing uh, play as anything, yeah. which is people will talk about the shows over time because they're good, and I truly Yeah, it doesn't it. matter if the, sh the show doesn't need to be skyrocketing at the beginning. It's going to be there for mm -hmm. a long time. It's going to be one of your centered pieces, and new customers will come to see it. And keep yeah, we going. saw a lot. So we're uh, the first-run distributor for a show called uh, Catastrophe in the U.S. It's on Channel 4 in the U.K., and you know what we saw with that was... Um, it's a um, you know, shorter six-episode series, and the reviews and the audience reaction were just outstanding. People loved it, and you just saw it pick up traction more and more over time. And That's exactly what you look for with a great show. I think it's less important that the show does the biggest numbers the first week, that in the long run of the show, the most people watch the show and the most people talk about it. Yes, question back. Uh, Peter Raymond uh, from White Pine Pictures in Toronto, Canada. Thanks. You also distribute as well as commission, I assume. Yep. And is, is that part of your, your job is to pick up... Uh, Do you mean internationally? Yes. Uh, no, that's not... No, I'm, On uh, Amazon. No, I'm strictly commissioning. So it's a different person that uh, looks at shows to distribute on Amazon? 
Correct. Well, t- sorry, to distribute other people's shows you on Amazon. You talked about the Catastrophe series, for example, that was produced in the UK, I believe. In- Got it. So that, yeah, that did come in through me and my group because that was uh, an original, original show to the US. There's a separate acquisition team besides the you know, handful of original shows. Um, there's tens of thousands of TV shows and movies that you can find that are, that are acquired by, by other groups. And, um, yeah. More questions, a few more minutes. Hi there, Emma Rosa Diaz, Afro Mike Productions. I um, produce online content for 16 to 24 year olds. Mm-hmm. What's your age demographic? We don't have strict age demographics, but we do tend to skew a little bit older. Um, you know, as you might guess, The New Yorker, Woody Allen, Transparent, you know, the audiences um, tend to be a little bit older. It's who subscribes to a subscription service to get you free, free shipping. Um, Teenagers, kids in college are not the number one demo for getting great deals on uh, shipping baby accoutrements. So I was a little older. Yes, we are here on stage with Joe Lewis. <laughs> Very exciting for me. One more question here? Yep, one second. Can you talk about how wait, wait, wait for the mic, please. Thanks. Uh, I'm Lindsay again. Um, can you please describe how Amazon Studios is organized in terms of you know what what you do versus what Prime does, and and in terms of you know I know you're doing 30 minute shows. If if there's other groups that are doing longer form, you know, sure. those kinds of things. So Amazon Prime Thank is you. an overall program within within Amazon. You know that um, while our service is a part of it, you know from music to shipping to photo storage, you know it sort of runs across. Uh, we have a separate kids team. Um, uh, we have a one-hour team, and uh, we have that our uh, new unscripted team, which is doing Fashion Fund, which you can get. Um, so the you know yeah, so that's it. And uh, what am I saying? We also have a, a movie team led by a great producer named Ted Hope, which started this year. And our first movie, Spike Lee's Chirac, came out. Um, and Amazon Studios will be back here in a month for the Cannes Film Festival, where we have a number of movies, including Woody, Woody Allen's next movie. It's also opening night here. Great. Yeah. Joe, thanks so much for coming all Thank the way you. from California. Oh, we have one last question in the back. Let's do it quick. We've got 52 seconds, 51, 50, 50. seconds. I'm 49, excited about this question. 48. I think it's going to blow up. At I the know. Moment. Hi, Christine Platt Dewey with Roco Films. I'm curious to know if your acquisitions team has um, a relationship with you, if they have any remit around acquiring content that is, you know, maybe somehow connected to what you're seeing works for you at Amazon Studios? Yeah, there is. I mean, you know, we have a small, there aren't that many of us in total. So, you know, we talk, stuff comes in through them, uh, stuff could come in through us, and we just talk about it. Does this make sense for the Amazon Studios original brand? Yeah. Okay. 14 seconds left. I think we're going to call it. And it's Amazon. So we we sit very close to each other. It's not luxurious. We have a beautiful cubicle. Say, Say a few more things now. Go ahead. I have four seconds. Yeah, exactly. You all are incredibly good looking, and thank you for Thank you very much for coming. We made it on time. Thank Thank you. It's a pleasure.